Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Welcome to Inspirate. We're here to inspire, empower, and enlighten you. And as per our season, we're talking around ushering in a new socio-economic paradigm given the impact of COVID-19 on our lives. Importantly, the digital economy is a element that really consumes us in terms of many people believe the digitalization of our world is a problem. At the same time, we are seeing the benefits of digitalization in our economy. Many people believe that it's, it is through digitalization that we've in some way dealt with the poverty issues, dealt with hunger, dealt with diseases, and digitalization of our economy is a positive. We want to really get to the crux of this topic. In studio, we have uh, two esteemed guests as per usual. Uh, we're in this beautiful studio sponsored by Enza Home. And Dr. Charlotte Naidu, uh, doctor, I believe you have a doctorate in artificial intelligence in robotics. Welcome to our Inspirate yeah. show. Thank you. We also have Tariq Bauer, uh, this young electronics engineer who is very much involved in the digital economy. Uh, now, before we, we, we get into, uh, you know, maybe the pros and the cons, mm. let's first understand what is this digital economy, uh, Dr. Naidu? So I think from, it, it's not something new. It's been around for a while. People, it's just that the hype has happened now and the fear because people misunderstand it. I mean, there's a lot of fake news around it. There's a lot of miscommunication around it. So, I mean, if we think of go back to telephones, go back to TVs, that's all technology. Mm. Um, and it's been around. Um, with COVID especially, we've seen a lot more technology enhancements. So yes, there is a socioeconomic impact, there is a financial impact, there is a political impact. Everything that's happening in the world currently has a technological impact in it. So for me, it's been around, it's just that we haven't, or we've, there's fear, there's pros and cons, or there's issues around it that, that has been affecting people in this space. So where we are, and uh, you mentioned COVID, mm. um, Tariq, uh, and, and COVID has, has shown us, right? I mean, it has impacted uh, us socially, mm. has impacted us economically. Correct. And, and, and you see now people maybe using more online services, which is technology that has allowed that. Correct. Uh, people working now from home. Uh, you probably weren't, were not able to do that if you didn't have this technological uh, infrastructure in place. Yes. So, for that. Yeah, so I think part of the saving grace um, during this COVID um, period is the fact that um, people and companies were able to still retain their businesses and jobs by being able to, say, telecommute, right? Not mm -hmm. even having to go into the office or to be in a face to face meeting, but they were still able to get their job done and be effective within their organizations. So I think that was definitely a positive. But at the end of the day, it also, um, I would say, affects um, our ability to understand one another when we are having these discussions. Mm. Because if I'm having a meeting with, uh, with another company that I'm trying to do business with, uh, a lot of that still works around the body language, the physical, mm. me being able to see what's, are you smiling, are mm. you grimacing, are you angry? Like, that plays a big part in us being able to understand what uh, one another's intentions are within that space. Mm. Mm. So, so, so the technology is one element, but it cannot replace mm -mm. what I'm hearing you say. It cannot replace that human interaction. And I think this is the, the elephant in the room mm. that we like to talk about mm. is that with artificial intelligence, and, and maybe let's define that. You know, yeah, you so, have so that's the thing, because when you talk about artificial intelligence, it's just saying there's human intelligence and then there's the artificial intelligence. It's just saying that currently the intelligence of a human, um, they, we use robots, we use other means of uh, algorithms and stuff to artificially um, define um, anything, for mm. example. 
So, so if you think about it, it's the extent of it. Um, a, you, a robot cannot be creative. A robot cannot sell. A robot cannot um, solve problems. Because what they do is, is you as a human is literally taking information and saying, hey, hey, robot or bot, mm. I'm feeding this information into you to be able to do it. The only thing the robot can do is take that information and apply it. Or based on repetitive information coming through it, can find pattern, patterns and, and, and trends and, mm. and information that can guide um, things. I mean, Tariq and I were talking yesterday about um, automated fridges and automated an automated house, for instance. A whole automated house, for example. So what, I mean, what they call the Internet of Things, right? Yeah. Correct, yeah. yes. Yeah. So the Internet of Things. So we were saying, imagine you can come home one day and your cupboard will automatically have systems in place that can uh, tell you, OK, you've ordered all these groceries, so if anything's short, it automatically links to an online system to Woolies or Checkers or whichever mm -hmm. store orders your goods and has it delivered and then it gets replaced. And I mean, Tariq, you were talking about uh, the automated fridge. Oh, yeah. So, <laughs> so in, in, in these kinds of cases, um, a lot, uh, with regards to IoT in, the, in these cases, a lot of these things are not actually intelligent, right? They're built for purpose, right? Exactly. So in this case, if it's, uh, say, a fridge that's able to tell you what's in the fridge, all it knows is that's there, right? When we're then looking at the artificial intelligence portion of it, Right, the artificial intelligence is either trained, right, through rep repetition, as Charlotte exactly. said, or it's programmed um, in 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 uh, in a way that, say, if I give it uh, water, right, it's like, okay, I have to do that, mm. right. It, it's not in any way able to think for itself at this point in time. Okay, so at the same time, though, uh, I, I mean, if you take him. Like the internet, I guess, has been around for, mm. let's say, maybe 30 years, right? It could be longer, but let, let's say in its, in its capacity that we know it. And, um, and if you take in all of this data that's been uh, captured. Correct. And the robot now or the technology is now mimicking how we have operated. Correct. The fear is, and I mean, this is in movies and all of that as well, <laughs> is that they then, the technology then starts developing its own uh, brain, right? It's yeah. its own uh, sort of uh, way of operating, which then becomes a threat to humanity. Now, now this is the concern, right? Correct. Yeah. So is this just movies or is it just far-fetched or is that a reality? So I, I, would, I would say, I guess, part of the goal, right, would be to create an AI that would, in essence, be able to be sentient, right? That in itself comes with its own uh, ethical dilemmas, mm -hmm. right? Because when, when we create, if we create something like that, it's, in essence, we're kind of playing God, right? Mm -hmm. Firstly, right? We don't know how this uh, entity or organism is now going to behave as well, right? Think about it. Um, you have your child, you expect your child to grow up, uh, become a doctor, do X, Y, and Z. It's not always the case mm. that the child listens to you and mm. does exactly what you mm. want, mm. right? Um, so I think we are still a long way off, right? But I think maybe sometime in the future it's definitely possible that we could um, create something like that. What do you think, Charlotte? I, I totally agree. I believe that anything with technology, uh, there's the and there's the pros and the cons. Um, and yes, we could use this technology for for harm, or we could use it for helping others. It, and and I, I link that totally back again to the human behavior. Um, if we have, I mean, if we have, um, for example, the military, they've developed little drones that look like butterflies. And these drones um, can actually go out and assassin someone, mm. all right? So it depends on what they, the intention of your bot or how you, I mean, I'm sure you'd like a personal assistant bot who can come in and solve your entire issues because to go out and do little things is a problem. So again, as Tariq was saying, it's all about the intention. You know, yes, it, it can be developed, but what purpose will it serve in the future? Mm. I doubt they will be able to, and, and again, I can be wrong, but as far as I'm aware, I doubt they'll be able to um, 
manage themselves completely. Yeah, you, I don't. I don't think know. So. Eh? But ah, that you never know what could. I mean, 20 years ago, we didn't uh, plan that this. Look, would you happen. you brought another very important mm. point. When I think just um, after the break, okay, uh, we'll we will discuss. Which is, you said, uh, I'd love to have a, a personal assistant uh, that's uh, using technology. Exactly. Like that. that in itself. And we talk in a global economy that has this problem around jobs. Mm. So the key question then is, does technology create redundancy of jobs and then exacerbate the problem mm. of this unemployment issue that we already grappled with in this current economy immediately after the break? Welcome back to Inspirate. We're here to inspire you, to empower you, and to enlighten you. And uh, we are discussing a, an extremely important topic around the digitalization of our economy. Can technology assist in addressing the social imbalances, the economic imbalances of our society, especially through what COVID has demonstrated to us in terms of this income inequality, this dichotomy between you know, those that are in resourced and those that are not. So with regards to that, and, 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 and you know, ushering in a, a new socioeconomic paradigm is to address this imbalances. Mm. Would digitalization, and we touched on it a little bit, would digitalization with the automation of a lot of functions, a lot of jobs, uh, you take now, they're talking of technology creating driverless mm. cars. Mm. So now you take an Uber, which technology is already allowed for, and now you will have no drivers in an Uber, <laughs> so you have eradicated so many jobs around the globe. Uh, drivers in terms of uh, truck drivers, for example, if, if everything goes automated, that's just one example. It could happen in other, in other fields, in other professions. How do we see the world in terms of that? Uh, would this just not create even more of uh, unemployment? Look, I, th I think it's inevitable, right? Um, since the invention of the steam engine, right? Um, jobs get lost when you reach the pinnacle of uh, engineering change, if I can call it that, right? Say from the steam engine to um, electrification, um, mass production, all of those have caused jobs to be lost. Mm. But the beautiful thing I think about human beings is that we are pervasive. So mm. while we may lose a job in this field, right? One door may close, another door may open. So I think instead of po potentially looking at what could be the doom and gloom within that, rather look at what else can I do? Mm. Is there something else that I could potentially do? Mm. And I guess mm. if you look at history, mm. I mean, maybe 80 years <clears throat> ago, there were jobs that were done then that became redundant and exactly. new jobs have been created. So what you're saying is, I mean, you use the word pervasive, so as we adaptable, right, yeah. as human exactly. beings. So we will then create new jobs and I guess a more abundant world so, through this. So if you, if you, if you think about it, um, what are the jobs that potentially could be um, replaced. It's the repetitive jobs. So if you think of, we talked about a PA, mm. um, we talked about um, in manufacturing, the, the, the guys on the ground actually doing the repetitive work. So we were recently doing some work with an auditing firm and we said, all right, if we bring in robotics process automation and we replace some of the processes with a bot, where does it lead? Are we replacing, are we removing, are we taking away employment? But what had happened through that process is we automated the financial aspect of it. So everything that came in, a bot would manage it, allocate it, issue, or do whatever it needed to do with it. Then the person that was doing that repetitive, boring work suddenly was now focused on understanding what was happening. Mm. So the focus spent more now on saying, hey, hold on, I was doing this and spending three quarters of my day capturing invoices, uh, 
updating statements, now actually can spend their time building relationships with the clients, understanding their needs, looking at the gaps, you know, picking up discrepancies. So I believe, yes, there will be job loss. And, and what I found over the period of time since this digitization has been oh, from a manufacturing perspective, mm. from a 4IR perspective, as that's been uh, progressing, um, there's now being a whole new, uh, uh, um, I wouldn't say group or, uh, um, was it an upcoming, of entrepreneurs. Right, right. Because right. a lot of people are now moving and say, hold on, if I'm not doing the repetitive stuff, can I be creative? Mm. Can I find mm. ways to solve the, 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 the economic issues mm. of the world? Mm. So entrepreneurs are starting to, starting to flourish now and grow, which is, which is something that's, that's more promising. Yeah, you make a very, very good point, right? <laughs> is that, and I think bringing back to that discussion we had yeah. earlier around that the computing, the robots, the bots, will never replace that problem solving skills, exactly. that creativity, innovativeness. That, and that comes, and, and even the soul. Yeah. Right? And how, how, how can you replace the soul, right, from a, yeah. in, a, in a exactly. technology? And so, so, what you're saying is that, yes, a lot of our menial jobs can be automated, which creates better efficiencies in our businesses, in our lives, and it allows us as in to adapt to become more creative. Mm, right? Exactly. And, 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 and that's where we as humanity need to sort of emerge into and this coexistence between us and, 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 and the robots. So I think what, what, what we need to remember is all of these technologies are merely tools, mm. right? Exactly. They're tools to better our lives, to better our ability to perform functions or jobs, right? They're not here to take it from us. Mm -mm. Mm. Mm. Now, I want to shift a little bit, and, and, and there's something that's also been on my mind. You know, when COVID came in, right, there was this whole thing, and we can't ignore it. We now move into faster data speeds because mm. we need that backbone. So this... For some people, a dreaded word, 5G, <laughs> right? And then I guess it will move now eventually to, if we're sitting here in a couple of years' time, to 6 and mm, 7G. Is this the, this evil that people make it out to be, Tarek? Um, in my opinion, no. Um, okay. I think a lot of this is based ar around fake news. Um, really, really what 5G is, is it's just 4G, but they can use the spectrum better, right? right. So you're not really... It's, it's, it's just using radio waves. It's not going to make you sick. You're already <laughs> exposed to radio waves using 4G. Um, it's, it's definitely something that's required. Um, 5G, uh, 5G basically is the back, uh, utilizes uh, optical fiber as the backbone, and it provides us with the ability to wirelessly connect to that wherever we are. And um, I completely agree with you. More speed means that we can do more online. Um, and it becomes extremely necessary if we're going to be working from home these days. Mm. Of course, we all want, I mean, data has now become the most priceless commodity. Exactly. Right? And who would have thought even 10 years ago? Mm. Uh, I mean, today, uh, you know, people would actually fight for data. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And, and, and we, we, which now brings me to another point, which data has allowed us to now connect with each other, right? And... You look at social media and how that has allowed us to all connect. And, and you know, you mentioned that uh, you still miss that, that human interaction. Mm. But, but let's take social media. And it's something that a lot of people find also a problem. And let's debunk that as well. Uh, there are stats that says that through social media like Instagram and so on, you've seen um, social ills in our society, mm. uh, increase in... Um, in mental health issues amongst our youngsters, especially the millennials. Um, is this, again, is it directly correlated to, to the fact that technology and social media has created this problem? Um, I wouldn't say they've created the problem. I would say the human created the problem. Because okay. at the end of the day, we have the ability to make that decision. How much of technology do we want to be exposed to? I mean, if you go and sit in a restaurant these days, you'll find a couple sitting there, and both of them are sitting on their phone. Mm. Um, kids, uh, as young as two years, three years, as soon as they, they're able to talk or see or whatever, parents are giving them an a, a iPad or something to work from. Mm. Um, I mean, kids today, majority of them have phones. Uh, the peer pressure of putting information on there, um, that's the kinds of things that are happening 
and its choices of us as humans. So I would say, I would say it's a problem if you allow it to go to that extent, where your whole life revolves around that phone. And that's what's happening with the generation of today. Mm -hmm. I mean, even if they eat something, they need to take a picture of it. Mm -hmm. um, where they are, what they do, their entire lives are revolving around this instant gratification that's required from everyone around them. Mm. Um, so, I don't know, Tariq, what's your views uh, around uh, that? I, I want to just bring another yeah, thing before no you, uh, yeah, you know, go to Tariq, is that with the advent of, 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 of social media, there's also this aspect of Big Brother mm. watching. Yes. Mm. Right now, now, is that a threat? Is Big Brother a threat? Well, I think, I think it's evident if you, <laughs> if you have Facebook or you use uh, Google to be able to yes. uh, search for something, right? Very often, very often now, you can see that these, uh, these uh, advert, advertisements and all of that are targeted to you. Mm. And you are wondering now, where is this coming from? And effectively what it is, yes, they're listening in on everything that you do and say, right? The difference is, is that I think in this case, it's not someone sitting there and it's like, okay, Tariq likes this, Charlotte likes this, <laughs> Yusuf likes this. Um, it's, it's, it's an algorithm that's basically um, taking all of this data and analyzing it and coming up with keywords. So if I'm talking a lot about going to the sea um, because I want to go fish, all of a sudden, I'll get many ads for buying fishing mm. rods or going on a fishing trip or stuff like that. Mm. It's terrible, right? It goes against our own pri uh, what is it? privacy. Yes, mm. yes. Right? But I think when it comes now to social media, right, uh, these social media companies, they're giants. W what can we do, mm. right? Mm. In the U.S., Congress has taken Facebook to court I don't know how many times, but there's nothing that they can do about it. Mm. Uh, so how do we protect ourselves, is the question. I right? think is, it, is it so invasive in our lives that, that there is no control? The way I'm listening to what you're saying is mm. it's inevitable, technology is here to stay, uh, social media. So are, are we just sort of part of a system that it almost feels like we're controlled by then some other force that's out there? <laughs> so so I, guess, I guess it depends also on how, if, how exactly you... You, what you expect out of social media. How exactly are you using it, mm. right? If you are using it where it becomes a, a large part of your life, right, then you could be very well being controlled, right, because they can select what goes on your feed or what images you see or what news you see, right? So I think limit it, right? Know that it's there, but don't in fully immerse yourself with it. Mm. Okay, that... Uh Brings us to the end of this segment. Uh, we spoke a lot around some of the uh, challenges with uh, technology and you know, really trying to get to the crux of the issue and, and, and hoping to have debunked some of the concerns we, I know I've had as, a, as, as, as a, you know, watching technology and being part of technology also been uh, sort of a, a, a proponent of social mm -hmm. media because we use it for a positive as well, but also exactly. understand its ills. But let's discuss some of the positives of technology and how we can use it to address the imbalances that we face as a society immediately after the break. You Welcome back to Inspirate, uh, the show in collaboration with our partners, the Movement for a United South Africa, Musa.org.za. Go check them out to understand this ushering in of a new socioeconomic paradigm. Uh, we are ravaged by COVID-19 in terms of uh, it has shown us this income inequality, this gap between the haves and the have-nots, uh, and it impacts us. Mm. Uh, what I want to now get to is, can digitalization, uh, on a global perspective, in Africa, help to address this income inequality, mm -hmm. this gap? Because surely, as humanity, we cannot continue right, on this trajectory, mm. where there's just a few that enrich themselves, 
and a large masses that remain impoverished. Exactly. We've seen countries like China emerge through technology. India, uh, the Indian subcontinent has used technology very, uh, very progressively. Uh, let's, let's hone into Africa, right, with our, with our situation. And we can talk from a global perspective as well. Charlotte? So the most amazing thing about Africa is, as Tariq was saying, we're very agile and mm. adaptable. And the one thing we have that the whole world doesn't have is we will have the youngest workforce in the mm. world by mm. 20, 30, 40, going to 50. We're already getting there. And what does that mean for us as Africa? It means that with that young workforce, we can do just about anything. Mm. We can become the, the biggest manufacturing hub of the world. We have the, the natural resources. We have all the minerals. We have um, the, the competencies. But the thing we ha we're lacking is the educational system. Mm. So for me, if we can develop the skills, I mean, if you think of, of um, robotics and artificial intelligence, and if you think of, um, and, and Tariq, you can just tell me if I'm, I'm not on the right track with that. But the skills we spoke about, the skills that are needed, creativity, sale, selling skills, problem solving skills, marketing skills, um, negotiating skills, is all skills that can be developed without a qualification. It's skills that we can take the unemployed youth. It's skills that we can develop. I mean, robotics process automation doesn't need you to have a, a, a degree. You can actually teach someone that and teach them how to code. Um, and that can be done from school days. So for me, the important thing is for us to stay and be the leaders in the world, we need to start looking at ways of developing the, the, the younger generation, those that are coming into this world and that generation to be able to be competent in any skills that are needed to adapt for us to transform digitally. So one may say, if you look at Africa, right, and you just look at this, as you said, this large youth population, untapped. Untapped. Untapped creativity and asset base. Exactly. Yet at the same time, though, the reality is you just have to go out and drive into any rural area and you've seen people that in many ways can be seen as left out mm -hmm. of this, this whole surge in technology and advancement. Now, how do we, uh, are we saying technology can catapult Africa in terms of maybe in time, you know, shortening that time in terms of then our growth, getting up to the levels that we're supposed to be at? So I, I, would, I would definitely agree with that. Um, I would say maybe 20 years ago, right? To be able to learn something, you would have to go to a library, mm. right? To get a book. Now, we're, we're, in a, we're in a space right now where we could actually democratize education, mm. right? Where we can provide everyone with the ability to connect to the internet and start to learn about something that uh, they're passionate about, they want to use to better themselves. There's, there's that opportunity. I think where the major challenge is met is that a lot of Africa is still very rural. Mm. So how exactly do we get that connectivity to the people? Um, I mean, it's, and it's not just about education, right? Another one could be about quality of life. Mm. Take uh, Rwanda, for instance. Um, so they still experience, they have a highly rural um, country and it's very difficult to get medicines across to people. Mm -hmm. So um, a, a group, a, a company there has developed uh, a new methodology, a new method to actually deliver um, these, these medicines. And what they're doing is they're using drones mm -hmm. to actually fly over to a rural area, drop off that uh, person's medication for the month and come back. Mm -hmm. So you see, st stuff like that, right, can improve a quality of life for someone in, in an area that um, they don't have full access to a kind of urban environment. Um, if we could then give them, say, internet or something where they could have access to this full array of information, think of what they could do. Mm. I mean, the, one of the biggest challenges, and we know this, right, and it's been spoken of in some of our previous shows as well, is this education deficiency mm. in, in Africa. I mean, uh, just in our own small community, a, a kid that goes to a... Uh, private school compared to going into a rural school, just already the advantage that that kid that went to that private school gets uh, already puts them in a, in, a, in a position where they have so, so many more opportunities 
that in itself exacerbates this gap between, uh, I use the term always, the haves and the have-nots. Uh, what we then say, what, what, what I'm hearing you guys say now is technology through maybe online mm, and so on, mm. and, and, and you know, people have access, can, can now start leveling that playing field. Because now a kid in a rural area, through the technology, has access. Correct. So are we saying that technology can be this catapult for, for, for eradicating this imbalance? Yes, definitely. Once again, um, I must elaborate. It's all about you as an individual. You have choices. Um, and in the rural areas, I mean, I've seen a lot of kids that has actually taken the initiative to buy the newspaper or pick up the newspaper and read and improve their English and reading skills. Um, so yes, with, with 5G, it's making it much easier mm. to, I mean, um, I think it's Stellenbosch University. They've actually, through satellite, are able to feed um, programs through every single part of the rural areas via phone. So I mean, I doubt there's very few kids or very few individuals now that don't have phones because that's their means of communication in this day and age. And through that means of communication, um, I mean, automation anyway is an example. They are uh, um, a company that gives you free courses. And if you get certified in, in, in a course, you can take that certificate and go and get a job. So it's that type of technology that's available. Um, and I, I mean, agree. I mean, yes. it can even go uh, further than yeah. that. Like if you take Stanford, for instance, right? Yeah. Ivy League schools in the United States, yes. which are renowned for their education, mm. provide free online courses. Exactly. Mm. So, I mean, this whole concept of democratizing education needs to come from all aspects. Exactly. Mm. You know? I mean, in, in many ways, this conversation is also using the technology to as a democratization of education, right? Somebody listening to this here, uh, listening to your esteemed, uh, you know, uh, insight, uh, it assists, right, in terms of... Employment. Now, on that score, somebody out there, a youngster, mm. right, that wants to start up a business, and I know business, we've been speaking about this as the driver for mm. the economy. Uh, technology, again, uh, w does it make it easier for myself to start a business if I'm wanting to get into entrepreneurship? Mm. So I would say yes, 100%, mm. right? Um, the first thing that you would have to do to register a business is do that is register via the CIPC, yeah. right? And it requires a whole lot of documentation for you to be able to fill and sign out to become registered with, uh, with CIPC and have a tax number with SARS. Imagine having to go stand in line at SARS mm. to be able to now get this tax number mm. where, where it could be done almost instantaneously or overnight through using an online mm. portal. Mm. It definitely helps. And of course then, I mean, that's in its inception. Uh, I guess even automating now marketing. But, hasn't, yeah. hasn't a website automated exactly. marketing or yeah. social media Correct. automated? Yeah, yeah, exactly. But think about it. Um, prior to technology, prior to all of this, we were limited to a specific area. Now, as an entrepreneur, you ex mm. you've got exposure to the world. Mm. Whatever you're making, whatever you're creating. Um, I mean, I wrote a little book uh, around women owned, uh, to work with women. And the fact that that book got to America and they've ordered the book, it says that whatever we try and do as entrepreneurs, just a little bit, mm. the world is seeing it. Mm. And if someone loves it in the world, your product's going, going global. Mm. So as entrepreneurs, there's lots of opportunity. Uh, going global, what <laughs> technology is doing for us is, is allowing us to connect with the world, it's making the world smaller. Uh, I guess at the same time, it uh, also provides uh, these tremendous opportunities for what we are trying to deal with here, which is this challenge of income inequality, this gap between the rich and the poor. And, and what we're hearing from our esteemed panelists is that technology in many ways can catapult uh, us as humanity into a more abundant world and somehow minimize this gap between the haves and the have-nots. Immediately after the break, We'll now discuss how technology can help the future for South Africa, Africa 
and the globe. You Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Welcome back to Inspirate in collaboration with our partners Musa, the Movement for United South Africa. We also like to thank our studio sponsor, Enza Home, for this beautiful furniture. And we have our two esteemed guests, uh, Tariq Bawa, who is an electronics engineer has been providing major insight around <laughs> technology and his experience as a youngster and, and how he can help us, uh, as well as Dr. Charlotte Naidu, who has a doctorate in robotics and artificial intelligence. And uh, this has been quite an intriguing uh, discussion. Uh, you know, we've debunked some of the challenges or some of the issues related to technology, but also looked at its positives to humanity. Uh, as we do in this last segment, uh, I like to, you know, look at the world five years from now. Right, so we were sitting here five years from now. So I, I, I pass you a, a, a crystal ball and say, okay, with everything that we faced as humanity, right, with all the challenges, and we know what these challenges are, there's hunger, there's, uh, you know, social ills, there's economic uh, fears, COVID is coming, a lot of people are losing jobs, uh, you know, people are, are, are concerned about their future. But how would you see the world, I'll start with you, Tariq, uh, five years from now, specifically, you know, with this techno technological advancement, this digital economy now really pumping and in, mm -hmm. and, and in vogue, how do you see the world five years from now? Uh, that's a very, very difficult question. <laughs> um, look, I, I think, I think five years from now, I would see it potentially as much posit more positive. I, I would say, hopefully, in the next five years, we we get rid of COVID, um, and we come out better for it. Um, again, technology is helping to reduce the amount of infections and deaths mm. within COVID. So hopefully we can we can eradicate it as uh, soon as possible. I think uh, for for Africa especially, I think uh, move it, in the next five years we, we would see more um, smart cities. Mm -hmm. So um, more use of technology in a in a positive kind of way to improve quality of life for people. Mm -hmm. And ideally, what I would like to see within that is uh, those requirements building uh, a need. For, for these uh, technology-based skills for, mm. for people to, 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 to be able to make these things a fruition. Mm. Mm. That's quite beautiful. Um, if we pass that crystal ball <laughs> over to you now, uh, Dr. Naidu. All right, so I'd love to see, or well, if I'm looking into this crystal ball, uh, an education system that embraces technology that starts teaching kids um, how to be creative and not understand we focus on, on the past, but now we've got to look at ways to say, how do we teach the future generation from schooling level, from, from double grade naught, I think, or double naught, how to be able to understand technology, how to, to be able to become more um, entrepreneurial. Mm. You know, to be able to, to be innovative, to be creative, to look at things that are coming, changing, adaptability. That's the kind of skills we need to start giving this generation. Um, I'd love to see an environment where we've, we've created a lot more organic um, through. Um, there's, um, there's something called, uh, what's those artificial plants? Uh, hydroponic. Hydroponics. Yeah, yeah. So imagine if we start doing rooftop farming with mm. hydroponics, creating all these uh, 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 entrepreneurial projects and opportunities so that people can farm and become self-sustainable. Mm. Um, so I want to see something like that. I want to see a reduction in, in, in poverty. Mm. Um, and, and, and that also means using technology to, be, to build um, or to provide entrepreneurial solutions within. Um, I mean, I, I take India as an example. 
they've managed to use, there's a book called um, at the bottom of, I think it's called Gold at the Bottom of the Pyramid. And what they've done is they actually show you how India has become so um, technology, uh, not even techno, entrepreneurial in the sense that they were able to find what is the gaps um, in the environment mm. and then use things like organic things like I'll give you an example, they've been using uh, banana leaves mm. to create organic sanitary wear. Mm. Um, they've been putting, knowing that the poor community don't have homes, mm. so they've been putting everything in little sachets. So you can buy, instead of buying a whole bag of surf, you pay one rand or you buy your package just for today. And in that, um, they've been creating or turning around the the economy of, as they call it, at the bottom of the pyramid, mm. where there's the largest number of population, they've been turning that into a multi-billion mm. uh, business. So I'm saying there's opportunity. We've just got to be able to develop and help in some way, skill the, the, the kids or the unemployed or educate and hopefully that will eradicate mm. or reduce poverty. And unemployment. Mm. So <laughs> as, as is tradition, we, 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 we deal with the challenges as we have and we also have provided and, and as we do provide okay. hope to our people uh, on the continent and beyond in terms of how technology can assist positively. Uh, as some parting words, uh, if there's three uh, key advice to our viewers uh, that are watching, uh, what would be those three, uh, you know, key pearls of wisdom that you can provide? And I'll start with 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 you, Tariq. I think maybe don't take everything you see online um, at face value. Um, be a little critical. Do a bit of do a bit of your research. See see if it correlates with with other sources online. I mean, at the end of the day. You want to have the most clear view of what's going on in the world. Don't don't just listen to what someone sa tells you off the side of the street. You know, um, that's actually very important because I mean, on social media, for example, WhatsApp, we get all these this information, and we assume that mm. that is necessarily correct. So what you're saying is, don't assume that that is even if it comes from someone who's yes. supposed to be a specialist. Yeah. That is that is definitely uh, you know authentic. Mm. Yeah. Um, I would also say if you want to learn something or you don't know how something works, um, it's a kind of contradiction to the first one, but online is a full repository of information that would be able to um, help you out with respect to that. And So you use the technology to empower yourself? Yeah, I mean, I mean in my everyday job, right, sometimes there's things I don't know. Mm -hmm. So I go online do a bit of research, mm. and most of the time <laughs> it works. <laughs> mm, mm, mm. Um, but that actually brings another point where you need to become discerning around your research as well. Yeah, right? you yeah. have to be critical. Yes, yeah. yes, yes. Um, and then I think the last one, um, technology is good. <laughs> it's good and it's bad, right? Remember, it's like any tool. You can, mm. It can be used for good and it can be used for bad. You just need to find the the middle ground within it. Yeah, which brings a very important point that at the end of the day, I think you had mentioned that also is that it comes back to ourselves. And if we operate from a goodness, then we can use exactly. the technology to help us exactly. as humanity become better. Yeah. Or we could do the opposite. And then we see even worse situations than what it is at the moment. Yeah. Thank you for that. Um, Dr. Dr. Charlotte, Very on quickly, your side, I think yeah, from my three, side, three collaboration. Can, right? Don't reinvent the wheel. Mm. The world has been doing this forever. So go, if you want to develop something, or if you want to build something, collaborate. Go and look at what's happening around the world. Speak to people. As Tariq says, it's available everywhere. So go and do that. Secondly, as you said, from a personal perspective, time. Manage your time properly. Mm. Use your te technology to benefit you, not to take over your world. So. Time cannot be replaced, so at the end of the day, you've got to take that time and manage it to the best of your ability. So you're saying you also need to sometimes uh, take a break from the technology? Yes. Mm. And, 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 and sit, when, you, when you're spending time with family, you, you shouldn't be on your phone. You, shouldn't be, you should be actually allocating that time to that specific time that you're allocating with family or friends or whatever. That should be the time given. Um, I think that's about it from a time perspective. <laughs> mm. Now, great. Uh, we almost come to the end of uh, the show. 
Uh, just in terms of uh, our viewers, I mean, you've provided some major insight. Uh, if any viewer wants to maybe connect with you, uh, how would they be able to do so, Tarek? Um, that's a good question. Yeah. Um, <laughs> do you have a social media? Or you, uh, yeah, I have a social media. I don't really use it. Yeah. Um, I, I, what, would I, can I uh, suggest that maybe they get in touch with you? and uh, you yeah, Okay, can, all right. right. We, can, we, can, we can just connect to Inspirate. And uh, if, if, if you want to engage with, uh, with the panelists uh, further, uh, maybe some advice, mm. maybe some projects that you can collaborate with. Uh, I know the guests are involved very actively in using technology for a positive impact in our society, especially in projects in Africa. So please connect with Inspirate and then you can do so. On that score, uh, Assalamu Alaikum wa Rahmatullahi wa Barakatuh and we wish to uh, see you on many other shows of Inspirate as we unravel this uh, topic around ushering in a new socio-economic paradigm and a better life for us in Africa, the continent, as well as the world. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.